So let's go around and do introductions. Um, I did introduce myself last time, however, you two know who I am. You do not know who I am. So my name is Shauna. I am a physician. I'm a clinical lecturer here with the uh, Faculty of Medicine and Dentistry. I'm an explorer. Um, I work in extreme, uh, austere, and space-like environments. And last time's lecture was all about innovative thinking, emerging technology trends, and how it pertains to medicine. Um, did you have a chance to watch the lecture? Yes. Oh, okay, perfect. So you know. Okay, um, great. So why don't we all go around and do introductions. Um, I know you guys know who I am. Um, but basically, your name, your background, what you're studying, what brought you to this course, or why you're, why you're still TAing with the course, because um, what, what keeps you here? So um, we'll start with Paige Hughes. Okay, so hi, my name is Yabba. I'm from Italy. Italy, yep. cool. Uh, I'm a student here uh, in the biomedical engineering department. I'm a PhD student. Um, I work on computational modeling of proteins and drugs. So we study interactions between proteins and ligands to awesome. understand like, if uh, a compound can be actually implemented uh, in vivo and so all this stuff. Um, I get suggested to take this course by one of my colleagues supervisor, uh, is uh, Jack Tuszynski. Okay, yeah, Dr. Tuszynski, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, but in general, it was actually really interesting because I think, uh, at least for me, that I have a very specific uh, view of the biomedical field can really uh, widen up my, my view of Perfect. how how it can be improved, how it can be in like 15 years from now. So innovation is really what brought me into taking this course. Cool. Um, sorry, what was your name? Uh, Jacob. It's Jacob. 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 Okay, perfect. Um, and whereabouts in Italy are you from? Um, I'm from Torino, Torino, which is in the north. Okay, awesome. Close to Milan. Uh, I'll be hopefully going to Milan for a conference at oh, the end of the year. Great. So. Um, and then, is English your second language? Yes. Okay. Am I, was I speaking too quickly in the lecture on um, Tuesday? No. Okay. If I'm going too fast, I speak very quickly for even normal, <laughs> like for English speakers, for native English speakers, to just slow me down if I speak too quickly. Okay. Um, did you enjoy the part about uh, soft puppeting and drug repositioning from last lecture? Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was right. Okay, perfect. And Hannah? Isla. Isla. Oh, yes, okay. Hannah was my cousin. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, that's why. I'm okay, Isla, go ahead. So I'm in um, elementary education. That's right. Okay. Um, yes, and I'm from here, from Edmonton. Um, I've taken this course, I think it was two years ago. Um, now I'm just a TA, but it's, it's fun being here. It's Not just a TA, you make the classes run, so. Uh, I try. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's, fun being, it's fun being in this course. It's like there's always something new going on, and Celez always has some new stories to tell me, so it's great. I love it. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and? Uh, yeah, I'm I have a biology background. Okay. And I graduated from my degree already, but I've been extending it for a year and a half or so just to open up some other avenues, I guess, academically and broaden my horizons a bit. So. Great. And was that biology undergrad? Yeah. Biology. You were last semester, right? Uh, two, semesters? Last, two semesters ago, That's so what it was. last okay. year with okay. as a student. Zayad? Zayad, yeah. Zayad, Zayad, okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I will be asking you all your names <laughs> repeatedly. Cool. Ayla, Yaakov, Zayad. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Sorry, keep going. Okay. <laughs> uh, when I took the course, um, it was also recommended to me by uh, Hannah, who had taken the course previously, and her older brother as well. And um, at first, when you hear like laboratory medicine, pathology 590, that's a very intimidating like, yes. course title. Yes, pathologists uh, Im intimidate normal doctors too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I was a bit intimidated to take the course, but then they had explained that there's just like a very big emphasis on like the integration of technology yeah. into medicine. And yeah. despite not being a medical student, I still thought that was like very interesting um, because a lot of the work that I did in biology was very like under the microscope, and this is very like macro scale, I yeah. feel, which I grew to admire a lot more. Uh, so that's why I took the course, and then I find that I keep learning from the course despite not being a student, which is what's kept me around as a TA. So awesome. that's why I'm here. That's great to hear. And actually, Kim, I've never asked you, but 13 years ago, you launched mm -hmm. this course. What, what propelled you to launch this course? So I took the. Um, 
the executive course at uh, Singularity University in February and March 2010. Yep, that's where we met. And I became um, really enamored with the idea of somebody creating a course. And I would give these talks about somebody should, should create a course, you know, yep. at every major university. And then I realized, well, I was a full-time faculty member and maybe it should be me. And I had, had the idea that I would just create this course and a lot of other people would create similar courses and there would be hundreds of courses like this, but that's not what happened. So, like I, I created a course and other people didn't, or, or the courses created at other places were not sustained. And, and if you think about that, like probably people differ in their ideas about when you would keep on keeping on with a course, right? Like the first year that this was a regular university course, we had two students and I knew that one of them, I had paid for an ad in this paper that is given to people who were taking the LRT. She was taking the LRT and looked at the ad, gave me the call. And that cost me $520. So the whole semester I was like, wow. So we've only got two students and one of them I paid $520 to get. <laughs> and I thought, I wonder if it's going to be that hard every time. But the next time we had five students and so on. But we still, with, with COVID and so on, have ended up with some pretty lean times where we were backed out. To or to 20 students. at times with virtual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we had not yet the students as well. Yeah. So that, that, that was basically the idea, and, and it came um, from Singularity University, and, and there are pictures. Shauna was also there, and uh, yeah, there's a picture of us dancing together, actually, and stuff like that, yeah. So the funniest part is that Oh, well, this is what Singularity University was taking down, based down in California in Silicon Valley. And so, even though we were both from Edmonton, we met outside in a totally different place. And I was actually a teaching assistant at that time, and then a medical student. And then um, Kim knew that I believed in future projections and innovative thinking and asked me to lecture in the course. So, that was our origin story. Yeah. yeah. And, and um, it. it <laughs> It's really cool. Um, you know, I I think, you know, Shauna has, has many exciting stories to tell, but I think one of the most exciting is a story that she never tells. She liked Singularity University so much, she almost didn't come back to medical school, that's and I'm true. sure. Yep, that's true, actually. Her parents were like, what? You're going to come back? Please come back. Yeah, and actually, you know, we're totally getting derailed here. Um, but uh, we can talk about that more afterwards about making an impact in medicine through research, through um, computational sciences, through education, um, through being a clinician, or, you know, the startup world, or some combination of all three, because mm -hmm. um, as you all know, I, that's kind of my, my day to day as I work with commercial uh, companies, as a startup, as a clinician and as a researcher. So um, it's a bit more like we can talk more about that offline. Um, let's get going because I've totally derailed the conversation now. Okay, so today is going to be an extension of um, the Innovative uh, Engineering Tomorrow lecture, but this is a practical workshop. So this is really fun because even if you've done this before, there is, are no two lectures that have been the same, okay? Um, so as you may remember, um, we kind of use the bottle as a principle for innovative thinking because we talk about how we can make things better, how we can re-engineer existing concepts, how we can repurpose concepts. So today, we're going to learn to think differently. Here is a snapshot from a 2021 article where they um, taught plants to email their owners. Um, so basically there's sensors in the water and if the soil is getting too wet or too dry, uh, there's a sensor that picks it up and auto sends an email to the owner of the plant um, and your plant can email you as to uh, what its current state of health is, um, which isn't something that I thought would be a reality when I was growing up, but there you go. Okay, so um, first of all, we're going to um, 
get to know each other a little bit more because um, even though I know some of you, you guys don't necessarily know each other. So we're going to work on um, getting to know each other, then idea generation, and then taking an idea and turning it into reality. So these times are approximate. These are for bigger groups. So we might go bigger or sorry, longer or shorter on certain um, parts depending on how we're doing for time presentations. We probably won't take the full 20 minutes. Okay. And by the end of this, I want you to have a sense of how we generate ideas, how we think differently and innovatively, how we turn ideas into reality, how we take first steps, and also when we're coming up with innovations, the ethics and land of unattended consequences. Okay. So the first exercise, I'm going to pass out some post-it notes, and you are going to write on them, talk to me about one, two, three items. Because we have three of you, we're just going to put you in one trio. And then for two minutes, uh, one, uh, you can decide who goes first. One person will talk about one of their bullet points, um, and then we will switch around, and we'll do that for 10 to 12 minutes. Um, so I'll pass that around, and then if you have any questions, just let me know. So. Yeah, so write down something you would enjoy talking about, about your own worldview or what you're trying to do in the world or whatever. Yeah, and, and then, yeah, you guys should probably get closer. How much of your family has taken this course then? Um, so my, my two cousins, so Hannah and her brother, have both taken this course. Oh, that's so yeah. You should bring your parents and your aunts and Oh, I honestly should at this point. <laughs> Get the whole family in. That would be really fun. You know, and that's not the first because who's one of the um, last time students have taken? Um, not Miriam. One of the other students. Yes, yes. So, um, Emily Kamani's sister is now taking the course, and Emily took the course, I guess, three years ago. Yes, that's what it was. And yeah, yeah. So, and so, so a lot of that kind a lot of, of family, family stuff. Family stuff. Perfect. So you may wonder what the alternative to promotion through family word, word of mouth is. So I, I used to go out on campus with both arms filled with with posters and tack up posters for the course. Somebody saw me doing this and said, it's like watching Wayne Gretzky put up a Wayne Gretzky poster. It's the most amazing thing. But anyway, we, we reached a point where I thought I didn't need to do that anymore. And so I don't do it anymore. I'm not quite sure I, I don't need to do it anymore, but I don't do it anymore. So we're, we're, we're counting on other ways of, of uh, you know, promoting the course. Although I, I may go back to putting up the posters. Yeah. Sure. So sorry, I, I went over the exercise really quickly. So take maybe two minutes, write three bullet points, like talk to me about dot, 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 number one, number two, number three. So it might be life in Italy, um, your favorite thing to do in your hobby, um, why Italian pasta is miles better than Canadian pasta. It could be, could be whatever you want. Um, and then uh, once you're all ready, just put your pens down, and then um, I'll start the time. Yeah, it's interesting how well watched some of those videos are because they have these long gaps where we're just waiting for the students to do it in. But some of the, I, I mean, people have watched the whole thing, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, we got a lot of views from around the world. Um, so we'll make this, maybe this section maybe 10 minutes, or I guess we'll do two minutes at a time.
So Kim, on um, social media this morning, I saw that there is now an FDA-approved AI for skin lesions. Wow. Um, that's coming through in the next couple of weeks. And I just wanted to comment that pigeons were doing it before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think uh, pigeons have um, the, the ability to sense colors in the UV it, spectrum. In yeah. the UV spectrum, yeah. yeah. So, so they may actually be seeing things that humans can't see. Cool. Yeah. You guys ready, or do you need a couple more minutes? I'm good. OK, uh, let's get it. So it's almost there. And Yakov is there? Yes. Almost, OK. <laughs> Okay. Starting the timer, um, I'll let you guys go and for two minutes. You can talk about one topic and then I'll change the timer. So go ahead. Go ahead. I want to go first. Okay, sure. Uh, so I have uh, soccer or football, uh, music generation using AI, and espresso machines. So I'm going to start off with espresso machines because I currently possess an Nespresso and I was just researching the difference between espresso machine prices and it was like very astronomical. So there's a coffee shop that I go to here in Edmonton called Square One and they have a Marzocco espresso machine that they use like every day for years I guess and my espresso costs $200 which is fine. I use it like two times a day every day, very little maintenance, but it's like a pretty good espresso machine, technically. Right. The Marzocco is $22,000. Uh, yeah, yeah, which is kind of outrageous. And I was like, I, <laughs> That's how good the espresso is. Well, the, espr the espresso tastes pretty good. Okay. But I was like reading on Reddit why a Marzocco would be so expensive. And there's like a, a whole plethora of, I don't know, tiny little parts that go into high pressure, high heat, and then water steams so that it doesn't damage the internal mechanisms of it and they have to be able to pull like espresso shot after espresso shot for I don't know however long they're open let's say 12 hours in a day every day without maintenance like they shouldn't be able they shouldn't really have to do maintenance on it because right. when they close like they close like they just clean it a little bit and then that's it so I think it's a combination of like the high output technical machinery on the inside to prevent it from like breaking um, and yeah the, just like the high output so I thought that was pretty crazy because like, it looks yeah. cool and it's not that big yeah. but in essence like it's I don't know a hundred times more expensive than my Nespresso even though they generate similar products yeah interesting and that's two minutes okay, so um, we will restart uh, the timer and switch topics Okay, um, I'll go next. So my three are your least favorite food, um, your dream job, and oh what? Oh my. Oh, you said why. I was like, I no, no. <laughs> <laughs> And a place you want to visit around the world. Okay. So we can go start with least favorite food. Um, mine is not going to be as long of a discussion as yours is because it's pretty simple. I don't like Brussels sprouts. I, I am so sorry. I know it's like some people Family really... Food. I know you're not even taking Oh, nuts. <laughs> <laughs> My heart. Um, I, it's just the tech, it's a texture thing. Like I really, I also am not a whole vegetable person to be honest. I have like a list of vegetables that I like. Brussels sprouts are, did not make that list. So I don't know, maybe it's a texture thing. Maybe it's just I'm really picky and need to like Man up a little bit, but either way, it's just not my thing. Just don't eat boiled Brussels sprouts. That's what you're doing, but like the roasted ones are just so good. You know, I ha to be fair, I have not tried roasted, so maybe roasted. I just I yeah. need to try that maybe. Yeah, totally. Okay. Not that I'm judging, but I'm also judging. But I hated Brussels sprouts as a kid too, and then every right. every few years I revisit a food that I hated as a kid and right. to see if like I still hate it or if my tastes have changed. And Brussels right. sprouts are one of them. But roasted really? ones with like a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of balsamic. Almonds. 
Yeah, my mother makes that a lot. I just avoid it at all costs. But she like she made, I should honestly I should just try it. Like if you're saying, okay, maybe I'll, maybe I'll give it a try and then I'll update you the next time. Perfect. I'll send you a little email. Open minded. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Do we still have? You have time, and also I'm detracting from your time. So nice. <laughs> Go ahead. Anything you want to say about your least favorite foods? Um, I don't know. I have kind of mixed feelings for poutine. Oh, ah. oh that's <laughs> uh, that's, <laughs> uh, that's a hot topic, but um, I had it like the second week I was here. I just came to Canada like, a few months ago, right? Um, and I was surprised because I liked it. Yeah. Uh, but I think it was just because it was a little bit more portion. Mm. So I had a bigger one, and it was okay in the beginning, but right. then I get. <laughs> it depends so, where you get it from. Because yeah, some poutines are horrible. Yeah. Like I don't even like them. The poutine's like one of my favorite foods. Mm -hmm. So it really depends where you get it from. Okay. New York fries. You should try New York fries. <laughs> That's not even Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Fair enough. And we'll just round up the conversation. What's your least favorite? Okay, okay. Oh man. I have uh, mixed feelings about eggplant. Oh. There will be days where I'll like really enjoy what's called like an eggplant steak, where you just like mm -hmm. cut it into what looks like a steak and you can like grill it. That's very nice. Uh, but then just like straight eggplant things, I Don't just boil it. can't do it. Don't boil it. <laughs> a lot of preparations I can't do. Like I come from like a Mediterranean background, and so mm -hmm. the difference between like baba ghanoush and like hummus, worldly difference. Mm -hmm. I love hummus, but I hate baba ghanoush. When in essence they're like not that different. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're different. They're so different. They're like different, but same. <laughs> Don't say that in a Mediterranean restaurant. <laughs> um, no, like you, I hated eggplant growing up, but then again, I revisited every few years, and then once I was finally living on my own, made it myself, and realized the difference with how mom was my fan. So, mm. yeah, there, there we go. Okay, perfect. Um, do you guys want to do another round, or do you want to move on to the next topic? I mean, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, that's right, Yakub, your turn. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what I want is a musical instrument, uh, because I play guitar. Um, how my like, home, especially to arena, feels colder than you, oh, wow. even though it isn't. <laughs> um, and then, that's it. So, I think we can go with musical instruments, sure. also because you mentioned AI. You know, this. So, I'm quite curious about that. Um, so yeah, I've been playing guitar for like 20 years now, wow. um, and I picked up a lot of different instruments, so like bass guitar, uh, a little bit of keyboard, you can learn. Um, and I will post a lot how the music makes me feel, because I feel like I can express things that I cannot express in, in other ways. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so maybe if you play any instrument or music, it's the same. Yeah, I can speak to that. I think I'm in the same boat, actually. I played the violin since I was five, so it's been 17 years now. Uh, yeah, when I first started, I was just like taking private lessons, so it was just me and my teacher for like eight or nine years, and then I joined an orchestra for the first time, and then we got to like play very emotional music together. And again, like when you're, when you're growing up, like musical instruments are not that popular amongst your friends, so you're always like a bit more unique when you do it, but then there's also like the emotional side of it that you can express that you can't really put into words. And so some pieces, like I'll listen to them and they're very complicated and I'll never be able to play them. But just like listening to them, they just like make you feel a certain mood that you can't really like express verbally. So I, I, I think I have a deep founded appreciation for music for that especially. If I hadn't played Instruments growing up, I don't think my relationship with music would be the same. Mm -hmm. That's fair. I, I played, well, when I was about seven or eight years old, I played piano. Like, I did piano lessons, but it was only for a year because my, I got scared of my instructor because she was kind of scary. Um, so I left. <laughs> and then, <laughs> yeah. So then I left and I did guitar for, I think it was like, it was also, I think, like a year, two years max. I can't remember. I was like nine. And then I just like wasn't as interested. Like I loved piano. It was just so fun. But my instructor scared me, so I left and then tried guitar and it just wasn't as engaging. So I I left it after like a year or two and then haven't so it's been a really long time, so I probably don't really know a whole lot. But yeah, that's my only background of music. 
What kind of guitar do you play at? Um, classical, oh, uh, electrical, okay. yeah, any kind of guitar, basically. So mainly That's acoustic, then? Um, no, like also the electrical guitar. Oh, so, wow, um, very cool. That's so we should start up a band, is what I'm wondering. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. That very That's awesome. Um, okay, and I mean, you did jazz poetry, Kim, so, right? Yeah. So, I mean, we have the trifecta, the quadrifecta here. <laughs> Yeah. That was awesome. So basically the point of this exercise, usually it's a lot more rushed than this and it feels a lot more dissatisfying than this because we go from topic to topic. But the idea is to kind of pique each other's curiosity about the breadth of what you're involved in and continue conversations beyond this class. So hopefully the conversations will continue throughout this um, workshop and beyond the class. So our next exercise is learning to brainstorm. So we talked about innovation, we talked about um, idea generation and design, we talked a little bit about IDEO, one of the world's premier design firms last class. Um, so now we're gonna build, take their principles of idea generation and learn how to brainstorm, okay? So we're gonna come back to this in a second, I'll explain them. But basically, in your group of three, I want you to pick one of these six topics um, and then cover your whiteboard with sticky notes. I'm gonna pass out some whiteboard here. Um, and what I've, I've brought examples from previous years, okay? So previous groups have basically covered up the entire whiteboard with ideas and whatever topic um, that they've um, chosen, okay? So you can choose things that you really wish existed, like cheap but elite espresso machines, uh, pet peeves, and the greatest challenges in the world. Um, greatest trends and, trends and technologies, um, not shockingly, AI was a very prominent feature last year. Um, ways to positively impact 10 people, 100, 10,000, 1 million people. And then applications for AI or machine learning, good or bad. Um, so that is, those are your topics, I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, this is one of my favorite examples, um, one of the best examples of just idea generation. Um, this was during the pandemic. So it was on a shared document. You don't have to read this, but basically it's how a, um, in a breakout room, a group worked collaboratively to just put down ideas. They put down 73 ideas in something like 10 minutes uh, and they cho chose pet peeves. Um, so I'll start passing out the whiteboard and then I'll kind of take you through the principles of brainstorming. with one extra in case you're one of those groups that needs more than one. So here you go. I'll put this here. And then here's the extra right here. Okay. So basically, I want you to not, not impede yourself by judging your ideas. Don't say, oh, that's stupid or that's impossible. That's impossible to say technologies. That defies the laws of physics. Don't worry about it. Those are later problems, okay? Encourage wild ideas. So whatever topic, if your idea for a, an emerging trend or technology is a teleportation device, don't worry that we don't have the technology for it. Just build, you know, build a, a wild ideas. Focus on quantity, okay? I wanna see that whiteboard covered um, by the time you're done. Um, build on each other's ideas, so don't talk over each other, but you know, if say it says, hey, let's build a next generation um, uh, espresso machine, maybe Yakov says, and then we can make it a smart espresso machine. And then maybe Isla says that we can use it to teach other espresso machines, who knows. Um, and then, you know, try to bring yourself back to the topic. You don't have to, don't worry about, you know, if you're kind of being tangential as long as you come back, okay? And then don't be free to be visual. Sometimes it's, a, it's nice to draw out your ideas. Don't worry about being an artist, okay? Any questions on that? Okay, so I'm gonna bring back the topic list again. Um, and then I'll start the timer and we'll give you 15 minutes for this. <coughs> Should we choose a topic then? Is it? We just pick one topic? Yeah, just one topic. Okay. What should we do? Does anyone want to speak out to you guys? I kind of like things that really show you to. Yeah, we can try that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, cool. Sounds good.
And then don't be afraid to have conversations with each other and you know say, oh hey, I noticed you put this, ask each other questions. Okay. Do you guys want any working music in the background? Some folks, I think Saya, your class had wanted working music. That could work. Whatever you yeah. want. What do you guys want? <laughs> yeah, sure we can get some music up in here. Last time they wanted classical, what do you guys want? Mm. You know what? I'll let it be up to you. You, you choose. Up to your discretion. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So what's, what's happening more and more with the music in our videos is the copyright owner identifies it and then says that it's okay for us to use it. So, you know, it used to be a big problem, you know, if it matched. <laughs> A copyrighted song. Oh, should I should I add that as a consideration? Should I not use music? No, no. Okay. <laughs> I, I think you're likely to pick something where the owner of that copyright will say, "It's just great that Shauna is using <laughs> our music." Well, we'll be doing uh, Scarlatti Sonata in D minor this season. Sounds good. Or are you thinking like fancy? Well, like you have something at the side of the place you shine a light on and then it goes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Damn, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Yes. No more fire. Um, I don't know. Have you seen the spy kids? Yes. Yeah, remember when you put the little packet in the microwave? Oh, right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You guys have nine minutes left.
and don't worry about inhibiting yourselves. Like, just worry about putting ideas down on paper. Um, just, you know, figure out what topic did you put? Things that really shouldn't be used. And then sometimes discussing your ideas with each other can say, ah, oh, you know what was really annoying on my way to work today or my way to school, and then um, that also is a good way to generate ideas. This cold is and a half minutes and about 50% of your paper to cover up. You guys are the quietest group I've had in a while. <laughs>
That looks really good. You guys are down to the finish line, but we're covering up that white space. Um, two minutes left. Isn't that just steroids? No. A pill to induce spontaneous muscle growth? Yeah, you just take a pill and your muscles grow. AKA steroids. Deferred judgment, I love. <laughs> 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 also, I've seen some horror stories on, on testosterone, so um, if you can come up with a better, safer replacement. There's, there's a whole market for that, I promise you. <laughs> Alright, let's get two more ideas in there in the last few seconds, you guys. Down to the wire. Tell me about, let's um, take a few minutes to tell me about what you've come up with and some of your ideas, and then we'll go on to the next part of this. Um, you guys picked things that should really exist. What did you come up with? Okay. Um, should I just start reading like a bunch of them? or Just tell me some of your favorites, you know, as a group. You know, what you were thinking, like what spurred some of these ideas. There's a lot of telephone, or not, uh, like travel related, so like, um, international trains or some like more what was it more complex transportation so finding different ways to like um tra like, tra uh, travel from one place to another because we don't have a lot of that like, we have like planes and stuff but I feel like if we had like a train or like a more like cheaper way to like get from like it's funny watching Jakob's face in these days <laughs> <laughs> the train That's system in Europe is excellent yeah 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 oh, oh you know what that yeah <laughs> well, like yeah okay not that's but yeah, I guess it's it was actually surprising coming here and it's called the train We stop. have terrible yeah. transportation yeah. costs. This so. Yeah. <laughs> but it is it is a problem. We need better we you know, we've been talking about a hyperloop or a fast light fast light rail transit between Edmonton and Calgary for decades now. So it's something that we would you know, imagine having a forty five minute commute to Calgary. That would be great, right? Yeah. 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 Sure yeah. Um there's a lot of food related ones too. Like I know you have a lot of food related ones. Are you hungry? <laughs> yeah, no, I had I had a couple. There's this uh, uh, scene from Spy Kids okay. where uh, Juni and Carmen in their safe house put like literally a packet that looks like this into a microwave for three seconds and it turns into like a gourmet meal from McDonald's. It's like very cool. That you had me to a gourmet meal from McDonald's. <laughs> no, no, no. But like that, that was the that was the one that they had. But they had like different cuisines. Like you could yeah. see it. It was like a German style. You know, like medical residents and university students everywhere would be all over that. Perfect. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Let's see what else. I had the uh, temperature controlled roadways. So okay. in I don't know the winter time here we don't have to worry about the ground getting icy. It could just be yes. warmed all times without being too high in energy expenditure, I don't know. We yeah, find a way concrete, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we had like general ones, flying cars, mm -hmm. teleportation, time travel. Jakob had a really interesting one. A scanner that can detect any disease. Like a tricorder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Yeah, you can just like, stand behind the scanner and it tells you what's wrong. Very cool. That would be useful. It's a great idea. Cool. Uh, any other comments? Um, there was a few that were related to, oh, what was it? Oh, no, I lost it. There was one I had in my head, now I don't know. 
a water bottle that you never have to fill. Bottomless water bottle. It just takes water vapor from yeah. the atmosphere. <laughs> that's actually a great idea. Cool. Okay. So while those, those ideas are fresh in your head, I want you to take one of those ideas and we are going to turn it into a business. Okay. So um, the biggest mistake that groups make on this is they agonize over which one to pick and then half their time is gone. So maybe spend no more than two, three minutes max picking what topic. Okay. And then I want you to answer these questions. You have eight questions and there's also another format. Okay. So what is your idea? What are you selling? What need does it serve or what problem does it solve? Who will use it versus who will buy it? Those can be two different things. So if you're a hospital administrator, you control buying, but the physicians might use it. If you're talking about toys, parents will buy it, but kids will use it. How will you make money? What's your business model? What threats or hurdles do you face? What external, what external help do you need? Who can help you? Uh, if you have time, name your, your company, come up with a logo, and then detail the first step you need to take today to make progress. And if you have time, start thinking about the land of unintended consequences. What are some um, downsides to what you're proposing? Okay. So, or there's a kind of fill-in-the-blank template here, Mad Libs. So at the name of your company, we've created product name and description because of this problem designed for this user. We will appeal to this buyer because of this value add, and we anticipate these hurdles and we'll overcome them by this mitigation strategy. Some of our strengths include assets. These assets are networks, and we will make money by putting your business model there. And then the first step we need to take today to achieve this is, and just put in your first step. Um, so go to it. Let's see where we are at for time. Um, let's give you guys 17 minutes for us uh, for this, which will take us to 10 after, and then we'll have you do a five minute presentation, and then we'll quickly debrief after that. And that'll take us some time. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Which which template do you want to use? This one or the questions? Questions, probably. Yeah, we have questions. All right, there you go. And the timer is up. We want a transportation actually in the room, so I was going to let you guys just go and answer. Maybe sure you have one person right and then we all just kind of discuss. Would that make more sense? Sure. Yeah. So. Um, number three, who will use it? Who will buy it? Oh, yeah, who are we going to, who is this going to direct? Like, could this could be, like, anyone could take this. Should this be, like, a school guy? Should this be, like, a medical device? How should we, like, should this be marketed to? Who are we to students yeah. and professionals? That could work. Who will buy it? Yeah, we can sell it to students. Maybe just schools. Oh, maybe just schools, yeah, because there's students. Yeah, that's true. Schools and students. Who will buy it? Who will use it? Who will buy it? How will we make money? Now, if we sell it to school, well... Who will use it? Well, it could be either a device or a program. But then we sell it to the school, for example, and then the school sells it to the students, depending on which student form. And we can also, like, you can make it more complex and, like, say it's like, it takes, like, it takes some information, but like, we can also have it take information from the student. So it could be like a testing device. 
You know what I mean? Okay. So like, let's say if someone's like, like, the teacher can use it to test the student. So if he's doing an exam, instead of like handing out a paper, you can ask the student the questions, the student responds back, and then this machine takes in the information the student has and holds that information. So the teacher doesn't have to do as much work. So the machine carries all that, like that memory from what the student said. So it can also be a, like a testing device and uh, a device for students to study with. So it's a studying device and a um, testing device. So we can sell it to both for two different purposes. Okay, but then it would be like built differently in both cases. So for example, I mean, I guess. I, I think like if it's helping me memorize, then maybe it's like something that I attach to the side of my head. And then like when I when I give it information, it like transmits it to my brain. Right. And then my brain will just have it there. For example. Right. But it can also just be like let's say it can like you say it can be like a small chip or something. So you can implant it like let's say or not implant, but like stick to your head and use it, or you can use it as like a test to so put it in your computer. And so when the student's giving a response to a question, it'll immediately put that information into your computer. Mm. Okay. So sure. it can almost, like, almost be like a little drive. Like a, okay, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so How will you make money? Yeah. Well, we're using it for more than one purpose. So we can use that time. Okay, so how will you make money? Uh, students slash professionals purchasing it. <coughs> then we can also have like um, preview versions. Do you want to learn a whole textbook in one minute? Or do you just need two oh, lecture okay. notes? Yeah, yeah. Like yes, that's, that's good. That's Level of cool. like complication. <laughs> I like that. What kind of hurdles or threats would we face? Maybe, um, would people scam it? Or like, would people like? Probably not. Some, some institutions or administrators might be like, well, this is taking away like the students' ability to learn. And so oh, they're making yes, students yeah. lazy, for that's example. True. Yeah, that's true. It's something. It is something can also be hacked. Sorry? Someone can also hack. Oh, yeah, hack, yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. 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 And it does rely heavily on memorization. So like you said, in terms of studying, like it doesn't really, it only helps with memorization. Not so much with application. Which I know in schools are trying to reel away from that memorization. So this kind of defeats the purpose. I mean, what external help do we need? We need an engineer mm -hmm. to build it. Yeah, because if it's if we're we're able to attach it to our head, we need to make sure that it's safe. <coughs> yep, definitely. Mm. What should I call it? What's a good name? Can I make the logo like I did with Techie last year? Sure, sure. Oh, I think we all remember Techie. <laughs> Yeah, You're, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Which one was Techie? Techie was a robot that I, I made, like, Techie the robot last year. I forgot what the what we were advertising for, but it was like a little <laughs> robot. I would, so Les is a little bit half asleep right now, so I would ask him, but he's... <laughs> <laughs> we actually did one of these. I don't remember which year this is from, but... It was from last year, I think, that I did Techie the robot. I made it on so Les's, um YouTube with it. These are this one's pet peeves, so this is funny to It um, was the pet it was actually under pet peeves. Yeah, it was under pet peeves. I just don't remember which <laughs> This one's also pet peeves. Uh lazy tears is on here. Lazy <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's funny. It's not 
not targeted at all. Um, nope, I don't see a techie on here. Maybe I, oh, maybe I took it with it. Maybe I'd leave it on. Someone put vocal fry on here. Oh. Interesting. Okay. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna make the logo for it. We need a name. Mm -hmm. And eight and a half minutes left, you guys. Cool. That's our piece of name, baby. See it, save it. Oh, that's so clever. Wait, stop it. I was gonna make it into like a brain looking thing. Now I feel like it should be an eye looking thing. No, wait, what if I make it both? You can say more than one. Yeah, that's so true. That is very true. You can make a logo, yeah. Make your brain. Yeah. Nice. But then with an eyeball inside. Oh, no. I think it's like Illuminati. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were judging here. I'm not judging. I'm asking. Okay. <laughs> Where are your spiritual that's allegiance nice. lovers? <laughs> okay. Um, first step we need to take today to make progress. Mm. I don't know. Maybe identify like where people today struggle with memorization for a while. Mm -hmm. And then we can brand it a little bit better or develop it better. I don't know. Or maybe like enlist the help of some experts. Yeah, definitely. I think it will be crucial to I think that's great. Oh, nice. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know. <laughs> uh, I know. <laughs> this is what I had to tech you last year. I just can't remember what it was before, but it was like this tech. It's like a robot that. Oh, I don't remember what he was used for. It was some type of robot that was used for something, but I can't remember what. Um, okay, I think we're good. We're good. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. I think that's a first. <laughs> um, with. Six minutes left to spare. All right, so then we'll switch it over to presentations. And um, if you guys, do you guys need a minute to prepare your presentation? Oh, Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, we're, we're you guys have just done this so many times. <laughs> we're so prepared. Okay, perfect. All right, go for your presentation, and then we'll go to a discussion in a debrief. Okay. Uh, we chose the device to memorize things in a few seconds. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Really cutting down the time it takes to memorize. Um, so we're trying to develop a device to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, what needs does it serve? The ability to absorb large amounts of information in a short period of time, which means that it could be marketed to both students and professionals who require that ability to either learn information quickly or retain information that might be very time consuming. Um, how will we make money? Probably one of three ways. And so the first way is if the student or professional buys it directly from us. So we will have our program device and we'll like sell it and they can choose to buy it from us. Some institutions might be interested in putting their own modifications on it themselves and so that the institution can buy it from us and I think the student can buy it from the institution. So that would be number two. And then we figured that we would have premium versions as well or like elevated levels to it. So if you want to learn, memorize a whole textbook mm -hmm. in an hour, that will be more expensive than let's say two lecture slides in a week kind of thing. So depending on your budget and your desperation, uh, that will be how we make our money. Uh, you guys want to tackle the next yeah. point? Yeah. Uh, concerning plants, um, we think that schools will be 
and to instill some of such knowledge because it promotes in main lessons in the students and also it is solely based on memorization which might not be the goal of these part of people. Um, the six was the external path that we need uh, would be a combination of um, engineers and software developers as well as clinicians to see if the device that we are thinking about is safe because we are thinking about something that can be applied uh, on the outside of the head and can impact how your brain does things so it must be safe to be put on the head and also should be safe for the brain structures um, the name of the company will be See It, Save It and we also have a bit full of it. So it's called, <laughs> which is yeah, See It, Save It. And this is what it looks like. So it looks like the eye of Sauron from here. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a brain on the outside. Oh, that's, gotcha. that's the brain. And then the inside has the eye, and that's like the camera, or like, you know, it, it's like recording. Like I'm going to take this and show it to you from a distance so you can see what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> it looks fantastic. <laughs> like, not at all um, scary. Not, not at all. It's <laughs> mental like techie. Like techie from last year. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, sorry, got sidetracked. Um, and then the last one. So what is our first step? We are going to enlist the help of experts in the realm of memorization. Yeah, well done. Give yourselves a hand. Um, okay, so question time. So you have just been served notice from Elon Musk and you're like for stealing his idea. How are you going to handle that? Elon Musk has enough going on. I feel like he's a nice. <laughs> it's a non-issue. <laughs> um, um, well. And then hot off the heels of uh, Neuralink serving you a cease and desist order, um, FDA and Health Canada are citing the studies of the poor outcomes in the uh, primate trials of Neuralink and how much infection and death and destruction there was. Um, how is your, how is, how are you going to avoid that? Um, I think my point is that differently from Neuralink that is placed inside the brain, mm -hmm. ours would be outside of the head. So doesn't actually get an infection for me. Okay, so it's an external, yeah. extra point of the Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. I think Elon Musk loves innovators. And so if he sees the strength of our idea, we could collaborate with Elon Musk and not necessarily be his competitor. So your answer is acquire us and pay us money. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. All right, all right, well handled well. Uh, as an aside, um, there are uh, technologies like that, like um, transcranial magnetic stimulation uh, definitely has been used for treating PTSD, traumatic brain injury, insomnia, um, more invasive but less dangerous than early deep brain stimulation. There was the uh, case study from last uh, class that talked about creating eidetic memory or photographic memory by accident with deep brain stimulation. Um, there's neurooptics. I think, um, like uh, shining a light, specific frequency light beams in the brain to create specific responses. So you guys might be onto something. There you go. Your billion, your billion dollar idea is hatched. <laughs> See, I told you that would happen. Exactly. <laughs> your your, your life has been changed by by this. Yeah. And not at all menacing the eye of Sauron. Well. I think it's fantastic. I think that it formed from Techie. Techie really, really involve, evolved, um, see it, save it. And I think that this will create a billion dollar business. Yeah. Um, have you guys ever seen Terminator? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And Skynet and how scary robots and AI can become? Yes. Okay, just throwing that out there with a cautionary <laughs> thing. But this is also <laughs> about AI, right? And uh -huh. AI is all about artificial intelligence and robots are, are going to get involved in that too. Sure. Yeah. So talking about the land of unintended consequences, how are you not creating um, a polarization in society between haves and have nots? Like maybe you don't come from a background that will allow you to afford this. So then the gap between the people who are smarter and get access to more opportunities widens and you're just contributing to the decay of society. How do you respond to that? Well, I feel like <laughs> 
in supply and demand, and with anything really in education, it's it's hard to get around everybody. Um, I know, are you saying I'm sorry you were born poor? <laughs> no, not at all, not at all. No, um, what I'm saying is um, it's more so on the school, like I, I'm nuts. I don't really know where I'm going actually with this. Hey friends. Okay, I have an idea. Thank you. Uh, a lot of schools today, especially U of A, from my own experience working with the registrar's office, is a lot of schools are trying to aim for more merit-based uh, ways of leveling a playing field rather than, or like a, not merit-based, need-based, yes, need-based. Need-based approaches to leveling the playing field rather, rather than merit-based. And so for those individuals who may be having to work multiple jobs when they have to study, coming from a lower socioeconomic status, we will find ways to work close to institutions to make sure that those types of students can gain access to it while with funding not being an issue. And so then so give away your technology for free, even though you're a for-profit company. Well, I think we will still have those willing to buy that will buy. And so that will fuel us enough where we can afford to give some philanthropy. Yeah. Yes. Actually, there's there's models out there. I think it's Tom's shoes that says for every pair of shoes you buy, they donate a pair. So, you know, there's precedence there. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, any comments on this exercise before we close out? No. Oh, thanks for being a yeah. harsh critic. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably one of the plain signs of how on my toys in this workshop. Um, yeah, so thanks for playing ball. Thanks, TH, for showing up. Um, so the debrief really is... Um, you know, what did we learn about the land of unintended consequences or innovating or, you know, adopting new technologies? Any comments on that? There's a lot of, like, a lot of things that you don't think about initially because when you think of these ideas, you at first it's like, oh yeah, like, you just need to do X, Y, and Z and it's good, but then there's, like, so much more to it. Like, when you started giving us all these, like, um, scenarios, it's like you kind of get thrown off, or I was thrown off by it, because I'm like, right, it's like I didn't really think about that, and so it's like, yeah. when you when you first get into it, all these ideas just come, and you're just like pulling with ideas, and then when you get like to the complications, that's where it, it just, you kind of get a little stumped for a bit, so it's not as easy as it appears at first. Yeah, it's like pulling it like on a thread on a sweater. Yeah. Yeah, for example. Okay. Any other comments at all? No? Mm. Okay, so we're just going to do two more things. So, um, coming back to the bottom, because that's a running theme of this course, why do we think differently? Um, because one of the running themes of my lectures, at least, is because there's potential in everything. So we talked about last class how bottles can be bottles, or they can be art installations or chandeliers. Um, and there's potential in every one in a world full of problems to solve. So bottles can even be light sources. Let's see if this plays.
One thing I'll call Jakob's attention to is there are several slides on a next exercise on future projections. Um, we won't go through it today, but have a look through those series of slides um, because it may come up on the midterm on how to build a future forecast on best case, worst case, most likely, least likely uh, scenarios and how we take different variables and match them against technology outcomes. So that was the only other note I wanted to make. Um, so that's it. That is class. Thanks for playing ball. Always good to see the TAs back. And um, we'll see you. I'm back on Tuesday. So we'll see yeah. you through that lecture. So I, I should tell you about the midterm. It is open book and you can access the internet. You can use uh, chat GPT and it's three hours and 50 minutes long. <laughs> you don't have to stay the whole time, but, but like you're not limited for time. And Shauna's part is the most rewarding in that she gives you lots of feedback. So it, it's worth spending time on her questions because the ideas you put in, she will critique back and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, my, my whole philosophy in this course um, is that I want you to, I don't, I don't care about your ability to memorize, ironically, despite how great your product is is I wanted to see your ability to think critically and take your own personal background and turn it into something fruitful both within this course and beyond this course. Um, and so the questions are based on that. So, I mean, if there's likely questions to come up, I do point them out in the lectures. Um, next time's lecture will be on space medicine, but just focus more on using analysis and critical thinking rather than memorizing anything. All right, that's it. Okay, great. Thank see you. See you guys next time.